Alrighty, now oh, we're going this way. Okay, so here we are. We are now on the high speed bullet train on our way to Wudangshan after negotiating the subway of uh, Beijing. And we've got six hours to kill. So I'm going to take some time to do some interviews with um, some of my students and hear about their story, what's brought them to this trip today. And prior to that, what's brought them into Wudang martial arts. So first we have Niels. Niels, turn. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, and you've been training with me um, in two phases, but the first one goes back, I think, possibly eight years ago, or seven, eight years ago, yeah, something, something like, like that, that, right? Yeah, yeah. The first one. So, could you say a little bit about the different threads of life that uh, were woven together to bring you to Wudang Martial Arts? Well, um, it was um, one of those serendipitous things, I think. Um, it was really knowing you, Giles, and then discovering that uh, you could work and discovering that there's this other part of, um, of what you do. And it must have been at a time when I was really looking for some, some sort of um, uh, physical practice, but not just some sort of sport, but a... Um, but, but something with a, with, with a bit more meaning to it, um, you know, something something which would fit with my meditative practice as, as well, and um, uh, and that's what and that's what I found. I was going to ask that because you, you you had a range of us kind of aesthetic and, and mind body practices meditation. Was there? Did it feel like there was something missing? There was there was something that you wanted to explore in a martial way? <laughs> maybe maybe unconsciously. Um, uh, you know, it sort of it comes together. So I wanted to do something physical. I had an inclination towards martial arts in, in, in some way, um, um, but at the same time, what I would do would have to it would have to sort of interest me and fulfil me somehow, and that, that would have to have some spiritual aspect to it, even if it's not very. They're definitely not on the surface in our Tai Chi and Kung Fu practice. Um, it's implicit, if you like. But this is this is a practice which which, which fits with which fits with meditation and the other the other spiritual practices I've been doing yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Um, what's been that? What's been the hardest aspect of? Uh, learning and practicing Wudang arts? I think for me, maybe the hardest aspect is the difference between um, uh, how, how I would like to be able to, to practice martial arts and how I actually can. Oh, amen to that. <laughs> we, all, we all struggle with that discrepancy, right? <laughs> We all want to be jet lead, don't we? <laughs> um, but I, I think um, I find uh, taking taking the practice to the level of kung fu harder to me naturally than tai chi, and so I've gravitated to the tai chi, even though I've got a, a also a desire to to practice faster and, and harder. And, and so in my Tai Chi, you're often telling me to slow down because I sort of want to speed up. If I do Kung Fu, 
landing in it. So I'm particularly um, really excited to be learning Xuan Yu Chuan and working with that, um, with those two aspects at the same time and shifting backwards and then forwards yeah. Yeah. within relaxation and then yeah. both speed and slowness. And the Liang Yi, the, the dual mind. So I guess the final question is, what took you from doing a class once a week to deciding that you're going to come to China and commit to the preparations that that required, and this now to be the, a full-on two-week episode of your life training in a traditional way? What's, what took you from um, a place that most people would be comfortable with in the West to this very... Uh, this this path that's only been trodden by the few. Well, um, it wasn't so much the desire or the interest in it, um, because uh, I think that's been there already. So maybe six or seven years ago, you were talking about going to China yeah. in a sort of five-year plan, um, and at that stage, um, I thought oh, I really want to do that. I just don't think I'm up to it, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but then when I came back after the pandemic, you know, I'd got an injury and I'd been off for a year and then there was the pandemic so I didn't come back for another year and I came back and started training again and somehow um, the learning happened much more easily, probably because of the practice I had before yeah. and I was learning more easily and making progress and I thought, okay, this might just be possible. And I was really excited by it. So that wasn't the thing. I was excited about it. I, I, want, I want to go and learn with Master Big, you know, as a Taoist master with all the lineage of that, to learn properly, just as I would from a Tibetan Buddhist master. To me, it's like a sort of retreat. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted that, but I couldn't see myself managing it. And so I began to see myself managing it. And then the fact that it was delayed another year by the pandemic really helped me out. As well. There we go, it was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. Um, you know, and being able to have time to complete Tai Chi 28 and, and learn another couple of um, another couple of forms and to do some Zoom uh, lessons with Master Bing, all of that came to end. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there was one final thing I must mention. So, Niels is my super sweaty Star Wars nerd friend, so we are both full-on Star Wars fans, and I know there's a few of us out there in the Wudang community, because it, it makes sense, this is the, the one place to find warrior monks with swords, um, um, devoting themselves to the Tao, the Force, as, so here we are, we're off to Dagobah to train with Master Yoda, right? 